Seattle is in a huge crisis. Our, our city has been destroyed, and we're not going to get it back anytime soon. Um, I agree we do need more police. Um, it's a free-for-all in Seattle. You want to commit a crime, move to Seattle. Ah, uh, yes. You may recall the riots of 2020 over St. George Floyd, who died of heart failure while being arrested for yet another felony. Well, Seattle has agreed to pay the Black Lives Matter rioters $10 million. Yeah, that's right. Uh, The Washington Post doesn't have the news because they don't cover the news. BLM protesters who participated in 2020 riots will receive $10 million from Seattle. Picture a burned out police car and the anti-police signs with rioters standing on the roof of the burned out car flipping people off, you know, Democrats. The city of Seattle, Washington agreed on Wednesday to pay $10 million to settle a lawsuit from a group of Black Lives Matter protesters who participated in violent and destructive 2020 riots following the death of St. George Floyd. On Wednesday, press release from the city revealed that the city is settling a complaint filed by a group of 50 protesters from September of 2020 who claimed they were injured by police while participating in demonstrations. Now, we actually have audio of the riots that took place there that were extremely violent. The city of Seattle admitted no wrongdoing. According to the city, the complaint involved hundreds of interactions between protesters, rioters, looters, fire bombers, attacking the police, and local law enforcement officials. Over a million pages of records, over 10,000 videos, hundreds of witness interviews, and extensive court filings. The city attorney, Ann Davidson, said the decision was in the best financial interest of the city, considering risk, cost, and insurance. they got to get insurance there, too. The case has been a significant drain on the time and resources of the city and would have continued to be so through an estimated three-month trial that was scheduled to begin in May. So they just settled for $10 million. It sounded like uh, absolute anarchy because it was absolute anarchy in Seattle. No justice, no peace. That's a white woman. I can tell that's a white woman yelling there. A six-block area. They're yelling racist at people. Like white people yelling racist at black cops. A six-block area of Seattle was taken over by Black Lives Matter activists who declared it an autonomous zone. The Capitol Hill-occupied protest zone. The CHOP, it was called. And... uh, You know, rioters forced the police out of the area. The city Democrats decided, oh, let them have it. There were multiple people shot there and two people murdered, including a 19-year-old African-American young man who had graduated from high school the day before. The second man murdered was a middle-aged African-American man that was murdered there. Several others were shot, and now the Black Lives Matter protesters are getting $10 million to split among 50 of them. That is $200,000 per person. Worse than death. I don't know it's worse than death. And those are white. Those are white people. Uh, they're, they're leftists. They're liberals. They, they smoke pot all day long and take mushrooms on weekends. And they're not very bright. And they're Democrat voters because... The Democrat Party is unwell, very unwell. Yes, indeed. I love that Joe Manchin is having pints in politics. No original thoughts in Washington either. you got to come to this show for any original thoughts in Washington, D.C., that's for sure. That's a for sure. Uh, and the United Nations, with all their murderers, you know, the United Nations, they're not on the side of civilization either. It's a third world dominant and dominated organization. UN agency fires staff members allegedly involved in October 7th attacks. 
It was a massacre. And U.N. staffers were directly involved. And so, you know what the United Nations has done? They're so angry they fired them. They used knives to butcher women, to rape, to slaughter, to take hostages. The United Nations Relief and Works Agency is immediately terminating the contracts of UNRWA staff members allegedly involved in the October 7th attacks on Israel. Commissioner General Philippe Lazzarini said on Friday, Lazzarini said that Israeli authorities provided the UN agency for Palestinian refugees with information. That's the only thing in quotation marks alleging several its videos, UNRWA employees participated in the Hamas murderous rampage into southern Israel when the militant group murdered at least 1,200 people and took at least 250 hostages, most of which are still being held hostage, raped and tortured. An investigation is being launched into the alleged involvement of the employees of the United Nations and those involved will be held accountable, that's what they say, don't believe a word, including through criminal prosecution, don't believe it for a second, said Lazzarini. The commissioner general said he made the decision to order to protect the agency's ability to deliver humanitarian aid to the terrorists, I added to the terrorists. In the wake of the uh, allegations on Friday and the proof being provided by Israel, The U.S. State Department announced it had temporarily paused additional funding to UNRWA. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, who is not negotiating anything, he's nowhere to be found. We're sending our CIA director to try to negotiate peace in the Middle East. Antony Blinken, our Secretary of State, who is a complete failure, spoke to U.N. Secretary General Antonio Guterres to emphasize the necessity of thorough and swift investigation into this matter. You know, this was reported months ago, and the news media dumped all over it because, you know, I'm telling you. You know, we're funneling money to the Gaza and the Palestinians. And, of course, we provide funding every year to Israel. We are providing tens of billions of dollars to Ukraine while they're fighting a war with Russia, While we lifted sanctions on Russia, so we're funneling money to Russia, buying their oil and their natural gas. And Senator Rand Paul, who is no slacker, and he's a medical doctor, just by the way, they never call him Dr. Rand Paul, and he's been violently attacked by Democrats at least on three occasions, on at least three occasions, including six broken ribs, a punctured lung, could have killed him, attacked in his front yard. And the news media said, no, it was a a dispute over a bundle of sticks. Look it up. But no. And Rand Paul, yesterday, observed something out loud that we should pay attention to. This Ukraine bill, this is going to be $11 billion worth of humanitarian assistance. Some of that goes to Ukraine, but some of that's going to Gaza. And it's not clear exactly how much is going to go to the Palestinians, but it's sort of bizarre that we fund both sides of every war. Sort of bizarre that we fund both sides of it. We're funding the Gaza and funneling money to the Gaza. They use it to buy weapons with which they wish to commit genocide, wipe out the state next door, happen to be Jewish. And we're funding them while we're simultaneously providing funding to Israel because they they are Fort Apache in Indian territory. They represent civilization. And the Palestinian organizations, Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad and so on, they represent the death of civilization. So we're funding the death of civilization on one hand and civilization on the other hand, the Palestinian terrorists and Israel. And then in Ukraine, tens of billions for Ukraine, they gave millions of dollars to the Biden family. No peace talks there. We're not dispatching our CIA director to Ukraine to negotiate a peace there. No talk of that. And at the same time, the Biden administration has made it easy for us and the rest of the world to buy Vladimir Putin's oil, filling his coffers with cash. So we are funding Russia's side of the war against Ukraine rather than sanctioning the heck out of Russia 
and Putin. We are the Biden administration in the United States of America, by extension, making available all this cash to Putin and Russia so that they may continue to wage their war against Ukraine rather than strangling them economically as President Reagan did during the Cold War days, the Soviet Union. So why are we paying for both sides of both of these wars? Well, Democrats. And Joe Biden is a, you know, a favorite son of the military-industrial complex, and Donald Trump not. The Obama-Biden administration attacked militarily eight countries during the eight years of the Obama-Biden administration. That is a number greater than any president of the United States has attacked since World War II. And he has the Nobel Peace Prize on a shelf at home. I think he probably laughs every time he walks by it. Amazing. Senator Rand Paul. You know, they're going to expect us to clean up and repair Ukraine when it's done being destroyed. Mm -hmm. The same with Gaza. Gaza's being destroyed, but who's going to have to pay for it? They expect us to pay for it. And I don't want a penny going to Hamas or to any of these people. Uh, Look, I have great sympathy for those who live in Gaza and the mess that they're in, and I wish it would stop. But I don't think we should always have to pay for everything. When do we become the sugar daddy of the world? We've got to pay for everything. We're the sugar daddy of the world. Well, we became the sugar daddy of the world a long time ago. We do have to pay for everything. We do pay for everything, including the United Nations, which is a profoundly corrupt, anti-American, anti-Western, anti-Israel organization that we ought not be funding. And we should kick them out of New York and go condo, maybe co-op. You know, you can go co-op, same thing. Amazing stuff. Let's go to number 13, Kamala Harris with her pal Katie Couric, where there were interlocking their fingers and pressing their faces against each other and smiling for the camera and hugging like they were dancing at a dance marathon. And it was extraordinary. And these fluffer questions and Kamala Harris with uh, Katie Kirk, you know, they got two wars going that uh, gas prices, we got crime, we got the open border. Uh, The world is in a state of chaos. North Korea is talking about war now. And uh, they tell us, no, everything is great. No, crime is down. The economy is up. Everything is wonderful. And Katie Couric, not a journalist, um, just sucking up like a pro, saying, well, gosh, why aren't you guys getting all the credit that you deserve? We have a lot of accomplishments. And I think what the American people want most in their leaders is that we actually get things done. And we have done it. We haven't taken adequate credit for it, frankly. And we got to do a better job of getting the word out about what we have accomplished and who did it. Yeah, what you accomplished and who did it. Well, let's see, there's war in the Middle East. We're bombing Yemen. Uh, We're funding both sides of the war in Israel, the troglodytes versus civilization. I am a Zionist. We're funding both sides of the war in Ukraine because Joe Biden lifted the sanctions on Russia to make sure that they had all the money they needed to continue the war in Ukraine. They bragged, Tony Blinken, our Secretary of State of all people, our chief diplomat, bragged that, sure, we may give them $100 billion, but 90% of that comes back to the United States because they use it to buy arms from U.S. arms manufacturers, which is true. So the military-industrial complex loves it. And the Ukrainians gave millions of dollars to the Biden family. Now they get tens of billions from American taxpayers to continue a war with no end in sight. Our defense secretary is in a coma in an iron lung in a basement somewhere. Nobody knows where he is. Our secretary of state is is nowhere to be found. And we're sending our CIA director to the Middle East to negotiate peace, which is absurd. I predict they will still meddle in our election, in our election this year. The CIA will, just as they did in 2020. But uh, how William Burns will manage to juggle this, I don't know. We'll just have to watch. Sure hope it doesn't get in the way of the intelligence community tampering with our elections here. That'd be terrible. Yes, it would. And the Washington Post blaming Trump and Republicans, Trump and Republicans, for killing democracy in New Hampshire? What?
Hey, it's Chris Plant, excited to tell you about our July 2024 Listener Sea Cruise. We'll be sailing around the British Isles, visiting Scotland and Ireland. Please join us. Visit chrisplantcruise.com. All right, uh, war, North Korea. Republicans killing democracy in New Hampshire, according to the Washington Post. That's coming up. And I hope to get to Tucker Carlson today. Threatening Canada's very existence. And I have Joe Biden for you. He is uh, not smart. His brain, she's a no good. She's a broke. Uh, Let's go to David calling from Chicago, Illinois, listening on the great WLS. David, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Hello, Chris. I have one short comment that the Bill of Rights should be renamed the Bill of Lefts. <laughs> I, uh, I saw that on the board and I said, you know, uh, that's pretty good. You know, under the Bill of Lefts, you have no rights. Yep. Because, yep. David, if you go to the Chris Plant store on Al Gore's Amazing Internet, you'll find that we have coffee mugs and T-shirts that say, the left is coming for your rights. And... You're talking about Maryland, I think, requiring three, uh, trying to Democrats, proposing a bill requiring $300,000, a magic number for some reason, in insurance if you're going to own and carry a firearm, which the Supreme Court ordered the state to do just uh, maybe two years ago now. And um, I'd have to look up when the Supreme Court actually did that. But recently, the Supreme Court said, because... They, uh, in Maryland, they said, no, you've got to prove you've got a stalker. Somebody's trying to murder you in order to get a concealed carry permit. And business owners that carry cash and, and all that stuff said, hey, you know, what about us over here? And so the Supreme Court ordered Maryland to allow concealed carry permits because of the Second Amendment to the Constitution of everything in the Bill of Rights. And that is, I assume, what you're referring to here. And you're right. They don't believe in your right to freely practice your religion if you're a high school coach and uh, Washington State, and you want to take a knee and say a prayer after a high school football game, they will take you all the way to the Supreme Court fighting against your right to practice your religion. If you're a jihadi, they're in favor of you. You know, they chant from the river to the sea and so on. But you're right, David, it's fun. The Bill of Lefts guarantees no rights. And the Democrat Party, they're not liberals. They're leftists. They don't support the Bill of Rights. They don't support our border. They don't support our sovereignty. They don't support the rule of law. They support anarchy. It's Mad Max beyond Thunderdome in Democrat land. You uh, you may remember when the uh, Democrats removed the statue of Thomas Jefferson from the New York City Hall in 2021 because he was a very bad man, you know, and uh, lived in another time. And uh, the Democrats today are such racists that they remove statues of white people and... and uh, The City Public Design Commission voted to send the 884-pound, 7-foot-tall statue of Thomas Jefferson to the New York Historical Society because Thomas Jefferson enslaved people. Thomas Jefferson did more to end slavery and did more to liberate people than just about any human being in the history of humankind. You may recall also, you know, the Democrats tearing down statues all over America because they're not on our side. You may recall Nancy Pelosi removing statues and paintings from the U.S. Capitol because they were uh, statues and paintings of racists. And every single one of them was a Democrat that she ordered removed. Well, I was reminded of all of these truths when I was reading my Washington Post today. Josh Rogan, a left-wing radical, typing on behalf of the worldwide left. North Korea is girding for war, girding their loins. Just not where you might think, is the headline. A recent series of erratic moves by North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un, remember how quiet he was during Trump, is leading many in Washington to speculate 
that he's preparing for war on the Korean Peninsula. Hmm? But there is another more plausible explanation for the despot's behavior, that he's focused on helping his friends in Russia and Iran win the wars they're already in. What war is Iran already in? Oh, yeah, they're in a war against Israel and Western civilization and attacking shipping heading to the Suez Canal and, and all this good stuff. But listen to this in the Washington Post. The North Korea is helping Iran and Russia with the wars they're already in. Huh. For the West, that's us. That's the newest and fastest growing threat from the country. Getting inside the mind of any dictator is a challenge, he types. And Kim is a most, among the most hermetic. He's among the most hermetic. It's the hermit kingdom, you know, the hermit kingdom, uh, North Korea, because they're hermetic, like hermits, you see. Like Herman's hermits. But that's another story for another day. So North Korea experts have been left to draw their own alarming conclusions from his recent behavior just last week. Kim told his own parliament that North Korea was abandoning efforts to reunify South Korea. He's lying. A project his father championed and his grandfather. Then, to drive the point home, he literally demolished the monument to reunification that had stood in Pyongyang for decades. So there is a monument in Pyongyang, the capital of North Korea, that stood for decades that was a symbol of reunification, which would only come by way of military force, with South Korea, which is free and democratic, thanks to the United States of America. And the North is enslaved, thanks to communism and the glories of socialism. And any voluntary departure of a, of a subject of North Korea is deemed an escape. All right? But he tore down the statue, the statue, the monument, dedicated to reunification. And that reminded me of Nancy Pelosi taking down the statues and the portraits and the Democrats taking down Thomas Jefferson in New York. And there's more than that. How could there be more than that? The Democrats took down the monument to reconciliation at Arlington National Cemetery just about a month ago. Like the North Koreans that they are. It was put there in the early 20th century, a symbol of reunification, North and South, putting the Civil War behind us. And the left, which was the South, the Democrat Party, was Jefferson Davis and the Confederate States of America in the Civil War. And when I saw this, demolished the monument to reunification that had stood for decades in Pyongyang, I couldn't help but be reminded of the Democrat Party today and their destruction of the Reconciliation Monument at Arlington National Cemetery. They're not liberals. They're the left. And it continues in the Washington Post. On top of that, Kim is regularly firing cruise missiles in the direction of his neighbors, deployed a, a military satellite successfully for the first time, according to newly released satellite imagery, has started operations at a new nuclear reactor. Some prominent North Korean experts read those tea leaves and conclude Kim is getting ready for battle, for war. Because, you know, the United States is weak, and when the United States is weak, speaking of the United States being weak, Iran being helped by North Korea, being helped by Russia, being helped by China, because they're all enemies of Western civilization. Pay no attention to that. But listen to this. From CNN, they're proudly announcing, U.S. secretly warned Iran before ISIS terror attack. The Biden administration and William Burns, the CIA director, who's on his way over to the Middle East to be a diplomat because our secretary of state isn't up to the job and our president isn't up to the job and our vice president isn't up to the job because these are left-wing Democrats and dim-witted left-wing Democrats at that. So our CIA director is headed to Israel to try to negotiate a hostage release. Hey, there is a novel idea. Why didn't I think of that? 
Oh, wait a minute. I did think of that months ago. Maybe I should be in charge of the United States government. Be running a lot more smoothly than it is. U.S. secretly warned Iran before ISIS terror attack. I talked about this terror attack at the, at the tomb of Qasem Soleimani, the commander of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps in Iran, the IRGC. And President Trump put the zap on him with the help of the U.S. military and, you know, uh, the elements of the intelligence community that are still on our side. And this attack took place, and a bunch of Iranians who were there to worship Qasem Soleimani got blown up by ISIS because it's what they do. It's who they are. And CNN proudly announces, because it was leaked to them by the Biden administration, thinking it would make them look good, the U.S. secretly warned Iran, helping Iran, that ISIS was planning a potential terror attack inside Iran's borders before the group carried out a deadly attack near the burial site of slain military commander Qasem Soleimani, Qasem Soleimani, a leading terrorist, on January 3rd, according to a U.S. official talking to CNN. The private warning was based on intelligence the U.S. had obtained about ISIS's plans and was given to Iran based on the U.S. government duty-to-warn policy for Iran. Really, if we learned that someone was going to assassinate Putin, would we give Putin a heads up? I think they would. I honestly think they would. So the Biden administration is using our intelligence apparatus to aid Iran, which is perhaps the number one enemy of civilization on the planet today. Certainly the number one state sponsor of terror. Certainly the people behind the Houthi attacks on shipping. Two U.S. Navy SEALs killed. Two U.S. commercial ships hit by missiles and or rockets on their way to the Suez Canal. Trade being diverted away from the Suez Canal, costing the world financially and, uh, and beyond. And Biden is helping Iran. Biden gave them $6 billion in exchange for five hostages at a rate of $1.2 billion per hostage. Aren't they amazing? A private warning based on U.S. intelligence to the Ayatollahs, Ali Khamenei, I didn't say Khamenei, it's uh, better that way. The private warning first reported by the Wall Street Journal, not by CNN. It is it is, It is notable not only because Iran is not a U.S. partner or ally, no kidding, but also because officials say Iran is behind a recent uptick. It's not an uptick. It's a a tsunami. In attacks by its proxy proxy militias against U.S. personnel in the Middle East, specifically in Iraq and Syria and Yemen and shipping. It's not clear, though, what channels the U.S. delivered the message to Iran, given that the countries have no formal diplomatic relations. There is an empty building on Massachusetts Avenue uh, that I drive by uh, normally twice a day. That's the old Iranian embassy. And it went empty when they uh, took all of our embassy personnel hostage in 1979, and the building has been dormant since. The old, empty, you know, when it was the Shah, you could get along. Women had rights in Iran. And the Democrats were against the Shah and for the Ayatollahs. That has not served the people of Iran very well. So the U.S. is in bed with U.S. intelligence under Biden and under William Burns, our CIA director. Yeah, let's help out Iran. Hey, some people worshiping at the gravesite of Qasem Soleimani, who murdered many Americans in Iraq, they're going to have a ceremony commemorating the death of the martyr of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps And Joe Biden and our CIA are helping Iran. I don't know how many times, how many ways I have to say it. They are not on our side. These are not liberals. They're not with us. Also, another hilarious op-ed in the Washington Post today. U.S. energy is booming. Why aren't politicians bragging? Well, because they killed U.S. energy when they came in, the Biden administration. President Trump had secured energy independence and one step away from energy dominance globally. They undid all that because windmills. Then the windmills started killing all the whales 
and they had to kill the windmills unless you wanted to commit whale genocide in the Atlantic Ocean. And everything they do sucks. Everything they do produces the opposite of the intended results. They want to save black lives. More than 10,000 African Americans were murdered in the United States last year. Pay no attention to that. Mm -mm. And, of course, they exterminate 40% of the black population in the womb, terminating 400 out of every 1,000 black pregnancies, but pay no attention to that. Also, the Washington Post has a, a political cartoon today. They have one editorial page, political cartoon. And today's, it's a big old thing in the middle of the page. And it is three vultures sitting on a big roadside sign that says, Welcome to New Hampshire. Live free or die. And there's a Trump sign stuck in the dirt in front of it and a Nikki Haley sign that had been stuck in the dirt that has been knocked over and graffitied over the live free or die portion of the sign is where democracy starts to die. Now, how is it that Republicans are killing democracy in New Hampshire where they had a primary where Republicans came out and voted and Democrats came out registered as independents, and voted in the Republican primary against Donald Trump and for Nikki Haley. Donald Trump won 70% of the Republican vote in New Hampshire. Nikki Haley won 70% of the independent vote, which was polluted by Democrats who had orchestrated a scheme to go in and monkey wrench the system by voting for Nikki Haley in the hopes of uh, working to the detriment of Donald Trump. So Republicans actually had a primary there. It's the first in the nation. The Democrats screwed New Hampshire, said we're not having the first in the nation primary. They didn't really have a primary at all. They had a write-in thing because Joe Biden wasn't on the ballot because for racial reasons, he decided South Carolina should go first and not New Hampshire. So it was Joe Biden and the Democrats that undermined American tradition and custom and our political system in New Hampshire, and not the Republicans. And it's the Democrats who are trying to eliminate President Trump from ballots across the country, presidential ballots. That's anti-democratic, undemocratic. It's the same thing they're doing in Senegal right now, but the Washington Post would never make that connection. Joe Biden not on the ballot, no Democrat primary there. Donald Trump on the ballot, Nikki Haley on the ballot. Was Ron De- I think Ron DeSantis dropped out at the last minute. That was voluntary, the Democrats. And also they have a, an op-ed today in the Washington Post by, by Shadi Hamid. Trump's appeal is what makes him a danger. <clears throat> I gotta, This is, uh, the Democrats aren't, honestly. They're undemocratic, they're anti-democratic, and they're not on our side. But they've got a lot in common with North Korea these days. Let's take down that reconciliation monument at Arlington National Cemetery, which was created with some of the first dead from the Civil War on Robert E. Lee's family estate so that he could never return after the end of the war. And the reconciliation monument was just torn down by the Democrats. The reunification monument just torn down by Kim Jong-un in Pyongyang. The Democrats have a lot in common with communists these days. Not so much with Thomas Jefferson or Abraham Lincoln. Certainly not Ronald Reagan. Really, they don't have anything in common with John F. Kennedy either. Just ask Robert F. Kennedy Jr., who's on the side of Governor Abbott in Texas and not Joe Biden in the White House. Now, Joe Biden was in Wisconsin yesterday where he was being himself. Biden blasted for his best gibberish yet in Wisconsin brewery speech. He might have been drinking. He wandered over to a big wooden beer barrel up on a stand and pressed his ear against it. He needs to be taken away. And uh, this one is classic Joe Biden. Nobody knows what he said still to this moment. Something about the Great Lakes and about beer being brewed, but nobody and everybody was 
uncomfortable, so they sort of laughed, trying to make him feel better about himself. By the way, used to make beer brewed here. <laughs> it is used to make the brew beer here in this refinery. Oh, Earth Rider, thanks for the Great Lakes. I wonder why it's going <laughs> Something about Earth Rider, Earth Rider, thanks for the Great Lakes, used to make beer here. He's standing in front of beer manufacturing. He has absolutely no idea what he's talking about. His brain is completely broken and uh, amazing stuff. And the NBC News headline is, Biden takes dig at Trump in Midwest trip, promoting infrastructure projects. Sure. And then Joe Biden, because his brain is completely broken, lied that he's created 14 million jobs. The reality is every economist has said 100 times, 11 million of those jobs were on ice because of the Wuhan Red Death lockdown because of communism and bounced back. Uh, So that's a lie, 14 million. Then listen to this grandiose claim for Wisconsin. Look, 14 million new jobs since I became president. 169 new jobs in Wisconsin. 169 new jobs in Wisconsin. 169 new jobs for the state of Wisconsin. 14 million is a lie. And then he tried to attack President Trump, his predecessor, but he failed. My professor, uh, (coughs) well, I won't get into my professor. (laughs) But look, my predecessor, though, he chose a different course. Uh, That's what he meant to say. Yeah, yeah, that's not true either. Uh, And the governor of Wisconsin introduced Joe as the big guy. You know, I am the last speaker before the the big guy comes out. The big guy, the big guy. (laughs) 